Hey guys, I'm sure that you have heard of log4j vulnerability by now. Don't get panicked. In this video, we will discuss what exactly that vulnerability is, how to reproduce it with a practical example, whether you should be worried or not, and most importantly, how to fix it. So without any further delay, let's get started. If you are watching this video, I'm sure that you know what log4j is. Log4j is a Java based logging library developed by Apache. It is the most widely used logging library. To demonstrate what the issue is with log4j, we will create a simple Spring Boot application and create a GET API which just simply logs the header that we pass. So I'm quickly generating a Spring Boot application by going to start.spring.io. Let's give the group name as log4j and artifact as vulnerability and let's add spring web dependency and generate it as you can see our basic spring boot application is downloaded let's open this in vs code now let's write a simple demo controller with a get endpoint so i'm going to create a folder with the name controllers and in this folder i'm creating a new java file with the name demo controller or Java. So let's annotate this class with REST controller and create a git mapping with slash vulnerability and public void log message. And in this endpoint, let's try to read the request header and log it. So request header with the name x hyphen api hyphen version which is of type string and variable name as api version and to log the message let's create the instance of logger class so private static final logger logger is equal to log manager dot get logger this is for the class demo controller dot class. Now let's log this API version. So logger dot info API version is API version. That's it. So all we did is we created an endpoint that reads the header from request and logs it. That's it. Now let's try to run this application and try to invoke the API and see what happens. Save it, go to the command line, mvn spring iphone boot colon run. There you go, our application is started. So let's open the postman and try to find the URL. So http colon slash slash localhost 8080 slash vulnerability. And let's pass the header. So x iPhone API iPhone version as 1.0.0 and send it. Cool, we got the 200 response. Let's go to the logs and check. And as you can see, the API version has been logged without any issues. But the issue comes when we pass something unusual. So let's try to pass something unusual. So instead of 1.0.0, let me pass dollar flower braces j and di colon ldap colon slash slash 127.0.0.13089 and let's send it again we got the 200 response so let's go to the logs and check it so the api version is printed whatever it passed without any issues but wait a second just now we mentioned it as unusual right so we expected some issue this is because we are not using log4j8 all the Spring Boot starters depend on Spring Boot starter logging, which uses logback by default. Meaning, we are using logback now for our logging, not log4j. So when we are using logback, we are safe and need not to worry. Let's try to use log4j instead of logback and see what happens. So to use log4j, we need to exclude Spring Boot starter logging and add log4j dependency. Now let's try to run this application and see what happens. Our application is started and let's try to access this API. So send, go back to the logs, 
boom this is the vulnerability though it is printed the ap version that we passed if you look at the error above it is trying to connect to the ldap using jnda lookup if you remember this is the address we passed as part of our header this can do anything like downloading malicious files and run them on our server even attackers can execute malicious code remotely this video is not about how to exploit the applications but how to fix the issue so that we are safe against those exploits that is the reason i am not demonstrating how attackers can exploit in detail but we will be discussing the fix in detail this is a zero day vulnerability a zero day vulnerability is an issue that is exploited before a developer has an opportunity to create a patch to fix the vulnerability meaning a developer develops something and deploys thinking that everything is working as expected but when attacker finds an issue he starts exploiting our server by sending malicious code just like we sent ldap address as part of our header the developer had zero days to fix the issue because he is not aware of the vulnerability by the time it is exploited that's the reason these type of vulnerabilities are called zero day vulnerabilities generally when a zero day vulnerability is discovered it gets added to the cve cve stands for common vulnerabilities and exposures so basically the cve is a dictionary that provides definitions for publicly disclosed cyber security vulnerabilities this is the cve number for this vulnerability cve number is a unique number given to each vulnerability discovered across the world so initially this vulnerability got identified on november 26th of 2021 so immediately after identifying this issue lockforge team actively worked on this and released the fix in 2.15.0 version so basically in this fix jndi lookups are disabled by default but unfortunately the fix provided by lockforge was not sufficient and that's when another vulnerability has been created with this number even for this vulnerability lockforge team has provided a fix and that has been released as part of 2.16.0 version well how do i apply this fix for my spring boot application for that matter for any application which is using log4j so as of now log4j team is suggesting a mitigation if you are using log4j 1.x we are safe and need not to worry but if at all we are using log4j 2.x we need to act immediately because if you can see here all versions from 2.0 iphone beta 9 through 2.12.1 and 2.13.0 to 2 2.15.0 are impacted please note that even 2.15.0 is impacted so if our log4j version falls into any of these brackets we need to act immediately so the fix they are suggesting is if you are using java 8 or later we should upgrade our log4j to 2.16.0 if at all we are using java 7 we should upgrade to 2.12.2 or otherwise just remove the jnda lookup class from log4j iphone core jar file please note that only log4j iphone core jar file is impacted by this vulnerability all the applications which are using log4j iphone api jar file without log4j core are safe so if you have the flexibility to upgrade the log4j version i would suggest to upgrade the log4j immediately many companies started filtering the http traffic using web application firewall as soon as they got to know the issue but as a permanent fix please upgrade your log4j version to 2.16.0 please note that this is just mitigation as per the official documentation of log4j mitigation means reducing the severity log4j is actively working on it and should give us the best possible solution very soon I'll keep you updated on that. As I am using Java 11, let's go to our project and upgrade our log4j version. For that, we need to add a property called log4j 2. dot version 2. dot 16. dot 0. That's it. 
let me save this and try to run the project again our application is started and let's try to hit the api and see what happens perfect we got the 200 response let's go back to the logs and as you can see the api version is logged and there are no errors meaning it's not trying to connect to the ldap using jnda lookups with this we can conclude that 2.16.0 fixes this vulnerability so basically in 2.12.2 and 2.16.0 versions the message lookups feature has been completely removed you may see the other possible fixes for this vulnerability like setting log4j format message no lookups environment variable or log4j to dot format message no lookup system property etc but those fixes are discredited by log4j as there are still code paths in log4j where message lookups could occur so the best solution is upgrade your log4j to 2.16.0 for this vulnerability i hope this gave you a lot of clarity on what happened and what to do thank you so much please do not forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on this vulnerability